So a week ago, I made a show <laughs> where I was talking about, you know, the issues that CIG, of course, has to overcome, you know, bringing all these different components together at such a fast pace, bringing all these different pieces together to make the basic game functional, all the different features within the game that we want to see, bringing them all together, all these pieces coming together at once. It's kind of like merging traffic onto a highway from three or four different on-ramps all at once accidents and problems do occur. And I kind of used an, another example where I compared them to Blizzard. And I said, Blizzard, you know, they've been running WoW for so many years and they still have problems. You know, this is a live game and they still stumble and trip all the time. And, um, well, <laughs> as if almost, <laughs> but you know, as if almost like I was predicting what was going to happen next. The very next day, they launched their 8.0 pre-patch, and this happened. So, did you want to say anything? Obviously, we've been we've been working through some issues, yeah. and I believe we're actually currently doing some maintenance on uh, North American realms yeah. as well. Yeah, well, welcome to all you joining us because you're looking for something to do while North America is down briefly for restarts. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's been it's been an eventful couple days. Um, obviously, you know, not. Not the smoothest of pre-patch launches, not the experience that we wanted to deliver, not the experience we hope to deliver, not the experience you deserve, frankly. A um, couple, couple different issues, I'll try to shed some. Do you claim supernatural powers? I've never said anything of that kind. I think it's kind of funny how, you know, I, w I would point out, th you know, that problem and then the very next day they would end up accidentally killing WoW in North America for about 24 hours with sporadic downtime going all the way into the weekend. It's like, hey, here's your shiny new patch and the system dies. I, th I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, it is kind of weird that uh, when I make episodes from time to time, you know, the very thing that I talk about happens just a few days later and you know sometimes sometimes i i know things uh <laughs> i'll i think i've admitted to that before sometimes people send me stuff but you know th the truth is i mean you throw enough darts at the dartboard eventually you're gonna hit the bullseye so i mean you have to be realistic about it but i wanted to ask you something now this has to do with game companies screwing up, making mistakes, you know, creating problems within their own patches. Let's fast forward in Star Citizen's history. Let's fast forward a couple of years. Let's say we're now possibly at the point where everything counts, you know, where it's no longer Alpha UEC, it's just UEC. It's the real money. Let's say you're out there and you're pirating or you're fighting the van duel, whatever, or you're maybe you're attack you know, you're a law abiding player, but you're attacking a pirate ship. The ship blows up, you loot the ship, but because of some strange programming error, the loot isn't what you expect. Let's say it's like five hundred million UEC worth of something. It's obviously a mistake. It's obviously not supposed to be there, but it's there. What do you do? Now, if it's an error that you can replicate, let's say you can do this more than once, then it becomes a little bit interesting. It goes beyond being just a happy accident because at that point, I feel that you, that's when you kind of cross the line into when you're exploiting it. If it happens once, you know, you just say, ooh, my good fortune. But if it happens more than once, if you can replicate that outcome, that's where I kind of feel that it actually becomes an exploit. The first time is free, but then after that, it's it enters into a bit of a gray area. But then you kind of go through that thing of feeling like, wow, I'm kind of a jerk because I'm taking advantage of this. I'm getting rich, even if it's only once. Shouldn't I tell my friends? Should, I mean, wouldn't it be fair to tell my friends that, oh, by the way, uh, there's this thing going on in the game right now and it's broken. So I'm not telling you what to do, but just FYI, this is a thing that's there, right? 
because you don't want to end up in a position where, let's say, a few months down the road, you're playing Star Citizen with your buddies, and they say, oh, man, this thing's going to cost, uh, like, 20 million UEC, and you go, well, you know what, don't worry, I'll get it. Where'd you get 20 million UEC from? Oh, there was this thing months ago that uh, it turns out you could repeat, and so I made, like, 500 million UEC off of this thing and uh, yeah I, I decided to only do it once because I didn't want to like break the game or get logged for exploiting or banned or whatever but yeah so I did it and then they're all going to be like dude why didn't you tell me I want 500 million you look like a total jerk to them because you you, ent you see what I'm saying you kind of enter into kind of a weird spot where it's like oh you know shouldn't I be telling my friends about this or shouldn't I I don't know now, money is one thing, of course, because if all of a sudden, let's say you did this and all your friends and all your buddies got in on it, all the guys in your org, and they made a shit ton of credits, just an absolute metric shit ton of credits, but they didn't tell anybody else, no one else noticed, and they just quietly went along their business. All of a sudden, you have this big group of ultra-rich pilot or pirates. That could be kind of a negative thing and definitely could imbalance the economy, especially if the wider player base found out about it and so that's kind of a bad thing but what if it wasn't something that could imbalance the economy what if it was something in the game that was ultra rare something that was supposed to be you know something that only dropped very rarely or something that it was very difficult to get get like a, a unique type of armor or weapon or something like that you know something really cool like that and all of a sudden you found a holy shit I can get this thing 20 times a day would you tell your friends? Would you tell other people? Or would you file a ticket and say, hey, yo, this thing is broken? If the item was, let's say, if it's a gun or it's ship armor or it's just armor for your person, what if it's nothing that offers, you know, a combat advantage beyond what a normal piece of, you know, let's say it's medium armor and it's a piece of medium armor, beyond what a normal piece of medium armor would give but it's something super rare something very sought after within the community and all of a sudden you find out it's it's dropping in this one place like candy should you go you know should you go and file a ticket about it or should you immediately go and tell your friends and go yo go get this thing right now because it's broken and it's dropping like crazy it's an interesting question right it's an interesting question and i figured you know what just for the fun of it <laughs> since we're we're dealing with things like this and we've already dealt with blizzard screw-ups um let's have a little a little story time where minion <laughs> admits something that he did back in 2010 an accidental exploitish type activity that he did and just see what people think of it so a lot of you know of course big always been a big wow player um and part of that game one of the more unique aspects of that game is the fact that there are mount collectors within that game there's a lot of people who like to get the rare and difficult to get mounts of which generally the holiday mounts are the most difficult to get because they only drop for a very closed window usually about two weeks you have one chance per day to get them and they generally have a one percent drop rate so it's a very difficult thing to get usually <laughs> but um one of the most sought after ones is the headless horseman's mount obvious reasons um and <laughs> back in 2010 uh there was a bit of a mix-up there was a bit of a screw up over at uh, Blizzard HQ and the Hallow's End event, which is the two week period where you can go and you can get this mount. They must have messed up the drop rate on the mount, at least on the server that I was on, because the mount wasn't dropping at 1%. It was dropping at 50%. <laughs> So imagine me, Minion, I log on, I go, oh, hey, it started, cool. So I go, I queue up, I go into the dungeon, get the reward, open the little chest to see if I got the mount. Oh my God, I got the mount. So I figured, holy shit, I'm, I'm really, really lucky. And so I 
you know, you teleport back out of the dungeon. I'm back in Dalaran. I look around. There's a few other people with the mountain. I'm like, holy shit, man. A lot of people are getting lucky today. Oh, I should log on to my shaman and try it again. Maybe I can get the mount for him. This was before mounts were account wide, FYI. So I logged on to my shaman. Did, you know, did the, uh, killed the boss. Opened the loot. Got the mount again. <laughs> Queued out of the dungeon. Uh, you know, left the uh, dungeon group. Went back, you know, teleported back to Dalaran. Look around. There's more headless horseman mounts around. I'm like, wow, yeah, I got the mount again. So I figured, oh man, I'll get on my warrior. <laughs> get on my warrior. Got the mount again. <laughs> I went, oh shit. <laughs> so did I file a ticket? No. Did I, you know, just send out any kind of alert to Blizzard saying, hey, yo, this is broken? No. I got on my phone and I got on email and I just started tagging everybody I knew who played WoW and I was like, log in right now, do the Headless Horseman, the mount has has got an insanely high drop rate and I started logging on to all my different characters and I kept doing it over and over and over again and it generally worked out to be about a 50-50. And so by about an hour and a half later, the city of Dalaran, which was in Northrend at the time, w the sky... <laughs> over the streets of Dalaran was filled with headless horseman mounts. Everybody had them. <laughs> and we were all laughing. And then all of a sudden we get an alert. The servers are coming down in 15 minutes. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And we come back. And all of a sudden the drop rate was back to normal. And we all got to keep the mount. We, we still had it. And so <laughs> I always kind of wondered about that. I always kind of thought, was I wrong to do that? Was I wrong to tell my friends or should I just file the ticket? Because we got to keep it anyway. And a whole bunch of my buddies ended up getting the mount. Was it really such a bad thing? Now, of course, I fully expect <laughs> many of you to pass judgment for or against in the comments below but consider what we were talking about earlier you know there's a lot of pieces coming together to bring this game together right now there's a lot of things colliding and at some point in the future you know CIG is going to be getting trying to push for live or what they consider to be a point where everything counts because one of the big drawbacks to what we're doing in Star Citizen right now one of the things that kind of pulls players out of it is none of it really counts. All the UEC that I'm making right now, it doesn't mean shit when the game goes live because I'm just going to be reset back to what I'm supposed to have and then we go forward from there. But at some point with all these things coming together, you might run into a situation like this. And that's something we're thinking about because, you know, it's very easy to kind of pass judgment on someone passively. But when you're in that situation, what are you going to do? Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, Please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.